Hey, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. Welcome to another Ableton Live video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make these sex in saturation racks. And I apologize for the clickbaity title. There is nothing to do with sex here. They just sound really, really, really good. And it made me think of sex for one second, only one second. Let me go ahead and just play you what they do and I'll explain a little bit about what's inside of them and they're for free download if you want to go download them on the blog. The one uses a third party plug, this real light saturator unit, which isn't free, but I highly recommend it if you're looking for a new saturation unit because it sounds fantastic. That's why I used it and when I was making this rack, I was like, well, I want to make something that's a little more accessible for people with live. So I made a all live devices version. Both versions are available in the download. They're just together. Go ahead and download and use whichever one you want. And if you want to learn how to make it and what's inside, stick around for the rest of the video. This is what we've got. Do you notice the night and day there? I hope you did. Even if you're not using great sounding speakers or headphones, you should be able to hear the difference. I think it's phenomenal. Like these are my new favorite racks that I've ever made. They just sound so good on anything too. It's so many different types of drums. If you just apply it to the signal, it sounds bigger. It sounds more roomy. It sounds more live. It just sounds better. So let's check out the all live devices version. And again, it just sounds better. This one's a little less applied to the signal. The real light version has a little bit more uh, being added to the, the final sound there, but I still think it sounds great. And these are just the default settings. If you want to get in, you can crank the, the balance. I'm going to show you what that means. The in versus out drive versus output of each one of the saturation units. You can add bass from the saturator bass. You can add depth. You can add reverb time, you can add reverb dry wet signal, and there's just so much flexibility inside of these racks and they sound, <laughs> they sound so great. So let's go ahead and make one, right? And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to make your own if you're interested in learning or you just wanna see better what's inside of those racks before you download them and use them. You'll understand everything better. So the first thing we wanna do is drop an audio effect rack onto the channel. We can open it up. And we're gonna go down to the saturator unit, which I believe is only in the suite version of Ableton Live. And I apologize if you don't have the suite, yeah, these racks aren't gonna work for you. But if you have the suite, you're good to go. Uh, rename it and just call it sex because that's where this, the magic happens, right? Create a second chain, rename, call it dry, and come into the chain selector. And we're gonna move for this from zero to one and then extend it all the way out and then ramp it up. Leave it on zero here and go over to 126, not 127, to 126, and then ramp it down. And what we're going to do now is map this to the macro and rename that macro sex selector or something. All right, and we can color it pink because that's a good color. And now as we move through the chains over here, we're going to get... When it's at zero or all the way over to the left, we're gonna get completely dry signal. 64 is gonna be half and half or parallel style processing. And at 127, it's gonna be a completely wet signal. So that's just something to keep in mind. And it's a good way to have a dry, dry wet setup for uh, multiple effects if you wanna do it yourself. Let's just go ahead and leave it at 64 right in the middle for now. For the saturator unit, we're gonna map the drive to macro two and the output to macro two. And what we want to happen is as I increase the drive, I want the output to dip down. And that way we're not adding volume to the signal. We're just adding the distortion effect from the drive unit. It's a very common practice, especially with hardware units. It's really easy to do inside of Ableton Live. We're just gonna hit that map button, come in here to, let's say the output and invert range. And for the saturator, we want it to start at zero because we don't wanna go negative here. So at zero, drives at zero, and the output is at 
And as we increase the drive, which is gonna add harmonic frequency, so the sound is gonna get louder, we're gonna decrease the output so the overall volume doesn't get louder. We're just getting the coloration from the saturation. And we can hear a little bit better if we go 100% wet. So that's perfect. And I'm gonna go right back into the middle there and we'll just drive it a couple, uh, like 10 dB. And this is what New York compression is, is you put it halfway usually and one signal is completely crushed and the other one is completely dry and then you mix them together to get a bigger bodied uh, drum kit, for example, or a bigger body bass. So that's perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and exit map mode. And where the magic really starts to happen is with the small room reverb. So I'm gonna come into the reverb presets. Let's check out the room. And there's one that says small room. That's ex the exact one we want. Let's go ahead and map that dry wet to six and map that decay time to five. Come in, rename these. Reverb, decay, rename this. Reverb, dry, wet, perfect. Let's put it around 20% and around 650 milliseconds is fine. You notice how big it sounds when you do it like that? Oh my God, I just, it sounds so good. Now there is some issues with that because as we're adding distortion and as we're adding uh, reverb and stuff like that. If you're using this on a bass channel or with something with the kick drum or anything like that, or even on a master bus, you want to roll off the sides or stereo low end. And there's a good way to do that with the EQ8. So I'm going to show you how to do that the way I would do it inside of this rack, or I did do it inside of this rack rather. Just take that EQ8, drop it after that reverb. We could turn off all of these filters and it's just a quick tip. Even if this is on and not doing anything necessarily, it's taken up CPU. So there's no reason to have that on. Uh, we can come into mid side mode, which means that we can affect the centered audio differently than the audio that lives in the left and the right field. Just click that edit to, to edit the S or the side audio. Turn these filters off again. Just go ahead and activate that low cut and we can map that frequency to macro seven. And then we can actually hide that chain so we can see a little bit more and just bring it up to about 60. That's a good place to start. You can always cut off more or less depending on what you're affecting, but it's just a good idea to have it set up and ready to go. Perfect, right? Uh, some other things we can map while we're in here is the base. We can map that to macro three and the depth to macro four. And this is just more ways to affect the signal. I'm gonna leave them both at zero. So I'm not coloring this, the sound too much, but it's there if I want to. <laughs> that sounds pretty gnarly actually. Did you just see how awesome this is, this rack? Like those all sound great. Super easy to do, just tweaking a couple knobs. My goodness. Let's right in out here, just to keep things labeled nice. Base depth, we can write saturator if we wanted to. Um, another thing we can do is just drop this down about two dB because this effects chain is gonna be adding a little bit of volume to the chain itself. So if we wanna keep it at like 100%, all the way through the chain selector here, we might have to knock down about 2 dB. And you can get in and even map that to be a little bit more precise, but let's not worry about it right now. The last things I would like to do to this particular rack is just drop a limiter on just in case. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop a limiter on here just in case. And we can go ahead and map that to macro eight, jump into the sex, map that to macro eight as well, drop it up, push it back up to zero. And boom, we've got the sex and saturation rack and it was easy to do and it sounds phenomenal. I can't get over how good it sounds. I'm happy to share it with you guys. It's available right now on the blog for free. If you wanna go check it out, don't forget to rate, subscribe, comment. We'll see you next time. I hope you learned something. Peace. <laughs>